I fucking hate the shit scan hyperlight. You know why? Cause this thing is so good it edges me every time I look at it and have to test other mice. And in this video I'll let you know why this is one of the very best wireless mice I've ever used. And as a disclaimer this indeed was an out to me. And of course that means that I will shill the ever living shit out of this mouse because I am a reviewer who got a free product. I also will mention that I was the only reviewer to actually have a very early prototype of the mouse and give feedback upon that. But honestly I couldn't help them much because the prototype that I had was just as good as this one. And before we get into the full review I definitely want you to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell right next to it if you're at all interested in these type of mouse reviews. Before we get into the unboxing experience I do want to mention Hitscan's background. The entire Hitscan project started back in July 2023 with a reddit post over on r slash mouse review where Chris one of the two main characters over at Hitscan was working on their first ultra lightweight gaming mouse. On that post they voted for what shape the community wanted to see, and to no surprise, the Razer Viper Mini won by a landslide. With that poll in mind, they created the shape of the Hyperlight, which is best described as a safe revision of the original Viper Mini shape, with flatter, less tapered sides and milder curves in order to make it viable and comfortable for as many people as possible. This combined with the ultra lightweight base and the knowledge of how to make a truly lightweight gaming mouse without making it into a cheese grater with gaping holes, whilst still keeping the build quality intact and holding onto those crazy tight tolerances on each part of the mouse on my units, is what makes this thing special and in my opinion, the best Viper Mini inspired mouse that we have ever seen. I really do think that this is the ultimate fuck you to the Viper Mini Signature Edition, especially considering that not only does this thing cost a fraction of that thing, but also has the QC been insanely superior at launch. And guess what? It doesn't have gaping holes everywhere. As you might know already though, there's another mouse in the market which is insanely similar to this thing, and we'll get into that more later in this video, as I do think that it deserves its own chapter. Getting into the boring stuff inside of the original packaging you will find your 1k dongle and if you want a 8k dongle you will have to buy that one separately. You also get a super stiff USB A to USB C cable so if you're planning on using this thing wired definitely don't. Of course most of these mice are now shipping with very stiff and very well isolated cables mainly because they support a very high polling rate and you want the best saturation possible if you care. You'll also find that these skates won't be applied by default on your mouse and you'll get the choice between these smaller types of skates or these large of pad style skates. And besides some basic instructions and stuff like that, that's it for the unboxing experience. In terms of weight with the large pad style skates installed, my unit comes in at around 42 grams. And in terms of the overall build quality, I have absolutely nothing to complain about. The tolerances on the mouse buttons especially are absolutely crazy tight. I cannot get any creaking or grinding or anything out of the buttons whatsoever. And it is one of the best experiences that I've ever had at a mouse at this weight. And due to the way that this mouse is designed with the PCB supporting the sidewalls and just overall really good engineering. I cannot flex the sides of this mouse whatsoever and I have never had any type of issue that has annoyed me in game with this thing. The pre and post travel is completely normal, there's nothing exaggerated to feel here and I think that the only person in the entire world I could break this thing would be Stubby of course. Now in terms of the shape we already now in terms of the shape we already know that is sort of based on the Viper mini shape originally. Although the design language is kind of similar it is very different in many aspects. The biggest aspect in my opinion being the sides just being so much flatter. They also have no taper towards the bottom of the mouse and the curves are way less exaggerated and it is overall an insanely safe shape because there's simply no curvature or exaggerated taper that hinders you from gripping the mouse how you want to grip it. The other difference is that the hump is a tiny bit taller and a huge difference is that the button height towards the front where the clicks are is insanely low over on the Hyperlite. And with all of these differences you definitely can't call it a Viper Mini clone at all. Since there aren't too many truly Viper Mini inspired shapes out there, I'm also going to compare it to the Maya here since the overall size is pretty similar. As you can see the button height is very different but the overall size, length and width of the shape and also the curvature is pretty similar although the taper on the Maya is much more exaggerated. Together with the hump placement on a Maya I simply
simply prefer the Hyperlite that much more. For my 19 by 10 centimeter aggressive claw grip, the Maya I simply wouldn't call a claw focused shape, mainly due to the fact of it being a true center hump mouse, with it being very mellow here towards the rear. Whilst the Hyperlite definitely feels a bit more claw focused, since I can definitely feel my claw support towards the rear, whilst on a Maya I'm almost forced into a palm grip, and if I claw it, I'm just very close to edging the mouse up here. And other than the Maya, I simply don't have that many mice that are truly similar, ex except for the Sora V2, which is barely similar. It kind of has some similarity in terms of the overall length, but the Sora V2 definitely feels bigger in hand. And the huge difference between these two mice is that the Sora V2 is a true claw focused shape with a hump way towards the rear, whilst the Hitscan Hyperlite is much more viable for different types of grips. And as you can see, they really aren't that similar. And I simply do not have a mouse next to me that is really similar to this thing, except for the ATK F1 Ultimate, which I don't have anymore. But that mouse will get into much further detail in this video. But that mouse will get into much further detail later in this video. In terms of the coating, it is this very grippy rubbery coating which is, well, insanely grippy as soon as your hands are a bit warm. And despite it being pretty cold out here in Switzerland currently, I do not have any issues gripping this thing. In terms of the buttons, this one rocks armor on opticals and I think the implementation is very good. They don't feel too tactile or too heavy, which armor on opticals can feel inside of certain mice. And the implementation is also not light to the point where you accidentally click them. Of course, I would still prefer a Huano Blue Shell Pink Dot implementation that is very well tolerated, or even the Kale GX switches that Endgame Gear has, but I think that for the vast majority of people in our scene, this is going to be more than good enough. The side buttons have little to no pre-travel and almost no post-travel, and the scroll is not my favorite. It is definitely spammable, but it does feel a tiny bit cheap. And the scroll click is also not the lightest in the entire world, but it is spammable enough. I wouldn't consider this one being too stiff. The skates that come with your hitscan hyperlite are absolutely phenomenal. If I remember correctly, these are from the same manufacturer as the X-ray pad jade skates, so they are pretty fast and definitely 100% PTFE and simply some of, if not the best stock skates that have ever come with a mouse in our scene. In terms of the battery life, on 1K of course, the performance is phenomenal. I can easily use this up to two weeks of gaming and also work, but if you want to use it on 2K or 4K Hertz, definitely expect to charge it every three or four days. And when it comes to high polling rates, their saturation and the performance of the 3395 sensor compared to the 3950, you'll have to find a different reviewer. I strongly believe that what you hold and feel in your hand is much more important than numbers on a spec sheet that you won't be able to differentiate in a blind test. And since I cannot and will never do any scientific testing, I think it's best to simply not even touch upon this topic in my reviews. So if you care about the technical performance and latency testing, please check out other reviewers like House Gaming, Aim Adapt, Pistachio, or Jerror. As always, you'll find the link to the software download in the description below. And once you open the software, you can then click on your mouse. And inside of here, you'll be able to change the bindings of all your buttons, turn motion sync on or off, adjust your debounce time on Armon Opticals, which I don't really know why you would. And then of course, also change your polling rate on up to 8k if you've bought the dongle. With the included dongle, you'll only be able to go up to 1k polling. If you want to know more about polling rates, definitely watch Rocket Jump Ninja's video down in the description below explaining it. It is then also recommended to turn on the high performance mode and also the long distance modes just because it amplifies the signal, but I cannot answer if this actually has a true scientific benefit for you. And if you just got the 8k polling receiver and you need to pair it to your mouse, this is where you can do that. Simply follow the instructions on screen and it'll be over within 10 seconds. Now, before we get into the my opinion section of this video, I do want to shine some light upon why the ATK F1 Ultimate is this similar to the Hitscan Hyperlite and educate those who aren't aware. And just so you know, I did indeed have an ATK F1 Ultimate for quite a while until I sold it recently because I decided to not review it. The original design file for an early version of the Hyperlite was leaked by a certain party and as you know, the best way to take advantage of that is to use that design to make your own mouse within the short time that the local production in China allows you to. That mouse then became the ATK F1 Ultimate Blazing Sky 8K Polling HD Extreme Gaming Mouse Wireless Esports for Gamers. Hitscan have since learned from their mistakes sharing full design files with their manufacturer and they kept their head down and simply focused on making the best mouse they possibly could with some changes over the later iterations of the Hyperlite that they thought the community would appreciate. Those changes being the 
heightened sensor position over the F1 Ultima, the slightly more narrow hump towards the rear, which overall gives you a slight benefit in terms of maneuverability in hand and some other minor details. For my fellow mouse enthusiasts, this whole story might sound eerily similar to what happened to Lethal Gaming Gear and your LA1, and that's because it is. Now, to the conclusion, who is this mouse for? If your hands are 19 by 10 similar to mine and you play a claw grip or a fingertip grip, I can definitely recommend it to pretty much any of you. This shape is simply that safe that anyone with the correct hand size can easily find a grip on this thing. I really do think that this is one of the best symmetrical mouse designs that we have ever seen. But if your hands are longer than 19 centimeters, I definitely would not recommend this thing to you because as you can see with my aggressive, which is not a relaxed claw grip, I am definitely nearing the front end of these buttons. So keep in mind that this is more of a small or small medium sized shape and not a medium sized one. MSRP is at $90 in the US with the 8K dongle going for $25 US dollars. And I think that the pricing for the mouse itself is insanely good considering its build quality, the overall experience and the fact that it ships and retails from an American brand, which cannot even come close to competing with Chinese brands when it comes to the net price of making a gaming mouse. When it comes to wireless mice, this has been the most difficult one for me to get off of, mainly because I used to main the Viper Mini for quite a while, and this reimagining of that shape fixes all of my issues I had with it, especially in terms of comfort due to that added width and the flatter sides without that taper. If I were on a budget and super schizo about higher number better because I need that included high polling rate dongle, I'd probably go for an ATK F1 bundle over on AliExpress, but if I cared about build quality, 100% PTFE stock skates and supporting the original creator, I'd go straight for the Hyperlite. I especially think that it makes a lot of sense going for the Hyperlite in the US since Hitscan is an American brand which retails and distributes directly from the states, but I definitely get that Europeans aren't too thrilled about the pricing here, especially the 8k dongle going for 30 euros at certain retailers, which is simply too much when taking shipping and import fees into account. And if money simply does not matter to you, I do not see a single reason to go for an 80k variant of this shape unless you're influenced by the higher number better effect because that one has a 3950 and this one has a 3395. And especially since my personal experience on the F1 Ultimate wasn't the best in terms of build quality with the flex and creaking I had on the left side of my unit, I still would rather spend a bit more money just to be sure that I get a really solid product. And you know what's even more important than just having luck with what type of unit you're getting? Support and warranty. Those are two things that are incredibly dodgy when buying mice off AliExpress. I myself have tried RMAing two Chinese mice before and I could not get any help whatsoever. Anyway, that's about it for this video. If you've enjoyed it at all, definitely make sure to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell right next to it. And I'll see you guys very soon. Peace out.